whosoever will not be loved, it is now. And so, Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to show our love for you and for mankind by listening to your word, hearkening to your voice, and letting the fruit of your glory show forth in our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Good morning, people of God. Please be seated. My name is Ebenezer. Ebenezer Green. And I come from Church of Transfiguration today. CRM. Very grateful for this opportunity. And I welcome you formally to the Chapel of the Healing Cross. I know you are a blessing. Antonike. The Lord is with you. The Lord will prosper your stay here in the name of Jesus. God bless you, bless you indeed. You're welcome. I thank the leadership of the Fellowship of Love. Uncle Sir, Mr. Golahon, right? And the entire membership for giving me this opportunity to share with you this special day. And I thank the people of God for the joy of being in, ha in chapel on a fellowship anniversary day. I bring greetings from Grace, who is here, my wife, from Telema, Sowari and Tamnomoni. Telema and Tamnomoni could not come because they are holding forth in the small congregation where we serve. Thank you. And I also bring you greetings from members of the Church of Transfiguration, whose fellowship I miss today, Father's Day, and who today are missing Father's love because their vicar is not there. But I had I had to start with them this morning. I had started with them this morning, processed, and told them that they should bear with me, bear with us, as I share the same Father's love with members of Chapel of the Healing Cross. I believe they accept and share their love with you. Today, we share Father's love. And so I can boldly say, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Turn around and greet the Father by you. And our Father, the Lord will keep you in honor and glory. The Lord will make you worthy fathers for your family. Perfect covering for your wife, for your home for all that God has given you. And God will not cause you to be ashamed. He will provide all you need to be a true father, like unto our Father who is in heaven. Amen? amen. If you believe me, say amen. amen. It's exciting that the anniversary of Fellowship of Love falls on Father's Day. And more interesting to note that the theme for today is an interesting one that takes us through the love of the Father. Justification by faith flows from God's love. I, I have known the CRM for a long time, and I know how it chooses topics. In this small sermon, from that theme, we are telling the entire story of the fall of man to the love shown on the cross of Calvary and the fact that through and in that love, we earn that benefit which Adam lost at Eden. And so Adam lost it and could not be put together again. 
The little poem I learned as a boy, I remember my father made me sit and learn it that day that I had to recite it that day. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And neither the king's men nor king's horses could put Humpty Dumpty together again. And so man fell from grace and could not be put together again. Except through the love of grace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is Father's love and that's the love we are sharing today. As I was lost and could not be found and could not regain that relationship that Adam and Eve had with their father, that they were driven out of Eden and became prodigal. But today, that love has brought us to him. I love the hymn, it is grace alone. And, 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 and uh, uh, especially the Yoruba version. Oh, Reofesha, Igekelemi, Jesu Kufu Araye, Oku. By grace alone. There are no projects that we have planned for. No goodness that we can do could bring us into the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And that's the essence of the thing. Justification by faith flowing from God's love. I know I'm being timed. I don't remember when I started. Because at this rate, I can go and go on and on. And it tells the story of salvation, which is captured like that. And apart from telling the story of salvation, it also tells the story of the one who believes that the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk was perplexed by the things happening around him in the entire book of Habakkuk. And he was wondering what God was doing. And he was wondering that God was using Nineveh, a wicked people, Babylonians, to punish the people of Israel. Yes, we sin, but our sin no reach that one. For God to use an evil person to punish us. And he was perplexed. And he was wondering. And God spoke to him in Habakkuk 2.4. He said he, he would wait at his rampart and see what God would do. And God said to him, the just shall live by faith. And so we receive salvation by faith. The entire gift of God that he had finished when Jesus said on the cross, the sixth word on the cross, John 1930, it is finished. That by grace we receive that salvation. And by faith we stand on that salvation. And so when he looked at things and God said to him, the just shall live by faith. He ends his book by saying, whether the fig tree blossoms or there is vine in the old tree, whether there is gary in the market, or petrol is 500 naira, or diesel, whatever, the Lord will provide for his all. Do you believe God? And so he says, the just shall live by faith. Say it back for yourself. And your faith shall deliver you. For he says, little children, you have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And this is victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. And that's the journey of faith. And recently, not as if I had not known it, somebody was sharing, I was at the clergy fellowship, and we were sharing, he asked, have you ever walked on water? He was sharing the passage where Peter walked on water. 
And Peter was looking at Jesus. And Peter took the bold step. He said, Master, do I come to you? He said, come. And he started walking on water. Then he looked around. Have you been to the Bar Beach before? And he saw the waves. And the waves were wicked. And they were bad. And he began to sink. And Jesus said, why did you doubt who oh, you of little faith? He had removed his eyes from the target, from the one who called him. He had seen the difficulties. Every day I go around, I see the trials and difficulties on the way. I wonder where the petrol will come from. I wonder where this would happen, how this would happen. But God says, look up to him. It is not the news in channels. It's not the news in our eyes. It's not the news in CNN that will take us. The scripture is saying, but our faith in Christ Jesus. And because we believe, we shall walk on water. Amen? Amen. And incidentally, quite a number of us here have walked literally on water. Maybe not that kind of water. We have taken bold steps of faith. And we can look back and say, the Lord is here. And I did not know it. We will share the story of faith. Justification. It's not by what we do. And so the theme, the text was taking Romans 5 by 8. That while we are yet in sin, while we are yet sinners, while we are yet enemies to God, Christ died for us. Adam sinned because he removed his focus from the creator who gave him instructions and he went to the created. And every day in the corporate world, every day in church, every day at home, every day in the kitchen, we are thinking of different ways of making ends meet. But he says, focus. And so he lost it. But we thank God for the joy we have in Christ. Are there fathers here? Do you have a prodigal son? Do you have a prodigal child? The scripture, Jesus told the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. That chapter of, Luke, of, of lost things in the Bible. Lost by, uh, uh, coin, lost sheep, lost son. The Lord is calling you today, like him, to humble yourself and let the large heart of the father touch that child. And God is touching you today, mommy, to let the large heart of the father, which is also of the mommy, touch that child. Today is the day of reconciliation. Today is a day of love. The day is the day of justification, of restoration. It takes humility to go back and say to that child, come, I love you. And if God did it and gave all, it behoves us as his children or people who want to be his children or people who want to serve him to do just that. Justification by faith. Not because the prodigal son merited it, but because he remained the father and loved the son permanently, eternally, like he loves me. I don't know if he loves you. He loves you. I know that he loves you. And he says to that prodigal child that the prodigal son turned around and said, if I can go back to my father and say unto him, Father, we know the rest. It behoves you today to turn around and say to Father, Father, I'm sorry for bringing shame to you. I'm sorry for trusting things that don't matter. Peers, substances, and not you. And if the prodigal son could do it for his earthly father, the Lord calls you today where have you erred? Where are you not in perfect relationship with your father 
and my Father, our Father who is in heaven. He calls us today. It's by grace alone, amazing grace. And he says, come, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Are you reconciled then to your father? Or is your father at home and you've not seen him for a long time? It's time to go back to him. Say, Lord, I'm still your ch child. Father, I'm still your child. And to go on to your father in heaven and say, Lord, forgive all the things I have done wrong. I'm still your child. And so we are justified by faith in what God has said, that your sins are washed away. And yet, that justification came from the fact that God had seen your state and said, I give. For God so loved the world that he gave. And love is an action word, an active word. It's about giving. Faith is also about trusting and about giving self. But you cannot give by faith if you don't have love. Because it's the love. First Corinthians 13 tells us you have faith, you have hope, but love is the greatest. And it's that love that God has called us into. It is that love that we are celebrating today as a fellowship of love. Hallelujah. Today, it's not just about the Father. It's also about the fellowship of love. Today, our anniversary, I believe it's also a memorial of sorts. I remember when I used to teach Pisa in the fellowship of love. And I remember those that I knew then who we are together with them who are no more. I remember Mama Love. I remember Mama Mrs. Olubaboku. I remember Professor and Mrs. Okewo. And most recently, Mrs. Mwangu. And I remember how love spread. And I know I remember how Mrs. Momu would, with her group, cater for the children on love anniversary. I looked, uh, I saw, I saw uh, 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 Billy, and I saw uh, uh, Manny. Uh, Manny was just with me. I said, are you in love? She said, yes. I said, that's very good. You've taken your mom's place. Apart from that, you will really be in love with that one that will be a covering over you soon, and we shall rejoice over you in the name of Jesus. Over you, over your siblings, for the Lord ministers grace unto you. I remember them. And so today becomes a day of memorial, a day we remember our past and begin to think how to move forward. I remember also some others who were there, who no longer worship here. I was so glad to see Dr. Bamboye. Welcome, sir. I know you have, even from a distance, you have always been strongly part and strength of the fellowship of love and of chapel. The Lord will bless you and the family immensely in Jesus' name. I remember people like, like your name is I remember people like Anio Laduros Mieti. And I ask, I wonder, does our love still reach out to those members who had been there with us in the past? The love of God reaches out to the lost sheep, looking for them wherever they are, and not only on fellowship days, but on a consistent and continuous basis, telling them that we love them, not for their money, not for that, but to show them that God's love still dwells in the chapel of the healing cross. Amen? 
And I don't know if Uncle Mike is here, Mr. Light or Uncle Femi. Uh, I guess about one of the oldest members. Today, by age, you'd be about the oldest member of Fellowship of Love. And by membership, the, one of the longest members. I see your two dreams. I see the people I call twins, Mrs. Uh, Labinjo and Mrs. Okunu. I see architect Ayodele. I see several, there are so many other people. It's not the day of mentioning names. It's the joy and seeing that God will still hold the fourth. Hold the fourth. For I am coming, Jesus signals to wave the answer back to heaven by my grace. And so what is it that God calls us to as a fellowship of love? Linking it with the issue of justification by faith, of living by faith every day of our lives. I know it's been tough. It's been tough raising funds. I, I, I look around, a fellowship day in chapel, and this place is not full. And the front pews are not full of members. But you see, don't look. He, he who looks at the storm does not sow. Paul told the, the, the Corinthians, that they had given out of their lack. And God calls us, not because we have, but because he knows that if he gives us, we will give for his work. And so when you give to the CRM or to the minister, it's not because they lack. It's not because they don't have. It's not because you have too much. It's because you're stepping out in faith. Sowing in their lives and in their ministries because their ministries touch people. People you don't know. People sometimes you don't know. People who will not approach you will not, but will not approach them. And so when I was called into ministry of faith, when we are called into ministry of faith, and God said, see if we will not look after you. And I did not understand it. And I saw the difficulties and the storm and yet the grace to look up to Jesus. And then I saw God walking in wonderful ways. I can stand today and say, everything on me is gift. The surplus and the cassock from fellow clergyman, the underwears and the, uh, that I wear, the shoes, I didn't ask for one. And God is calling us with fellowship of love to go in this faith that he will give if we will prepare to stand to trust him. And the question today is, would you trust me? It is trust that caused the failure of man. It is trust that brings back the restoration. Jesus trusted his father and he said, do you believe me? He asked Peter, in John 21. Peter, do you love me? You asked him three times. And the summary of what he said to him is take care of my flock. And he said to us, if you love me, keep my commandment. And my commandment is leaving, is trusting him for every day. I talked about my coming. You know about the car that I drive. And so I found out every day, new surprises, new every morning is his love, new every morning is his grace. And has God called you to love? Yes, show that love. Chapel is known for showing love, yes. But God is asking you to reach out beyond who you wear and what you wear and touch the world with his love. Because our religion is based on love. 
But this love, this theme tells us, is not love by any other definition, but love that flows through faith. Because I know that the Lord will take care of me. I'll be able to share the little that I have. And I will risk, I will not stock it somewhere. Because I know that I know that I know that when the day arises, my God will arise for me. And that is the love that God is calling us to. A sacrificial love that flows from faith in his grace. And when we have done it and lived by it, we will see the outcome. As I was preparing this sermon, in him was put on my mind. Church him now, 453, we use church him now in the diocese. He says, And now, Father, mindful of the love, it's a communion song. That brought us once for all on Calvary's tree. And having with us him that bleeds above, we here present, we here spread forth to thee that only offering perfect in thy sight, the one true, pure, immortal sacrifice. That sacrifice is tied in love, is tied in faith, is tied in what God is doing. And as a round off, you find that when you take that step of love that is tied in faith, you'll be able to sing. If I borrow the song, I don't know the full song, but I, I heard the, the chorus. See the way he answered me to be to go. To be to go. To be to go. He has done it for me. And the Lord will do it for you. I don't know what it is, but my father says he will do it for you. He said, Do you trust me? I will do it for you. And he says, go on praising him. Go on thanking him. To be chuku, he has done it for me. Let us pray. And so gracious Father, we thank you. As you grant us grace to continually praise you in faith. Even when in crisis, like Paul and Silas. Knowing that your love reaches us everywhere, every time. Teach us, Lord, and help us to, in the same faith, reach out in love that we may draw men into your kingdom, that we may enlarge your kingdom here on earth, and that we may enlarge, by your grace, our mansion in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And the fellowship of love celebrates. Celebration shall not depart from our midst. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless and keep you. In Jesus' name.